So I've been chief for about two and a half years. This is probably the first time that I think I can just sit down. <laughs> <laughs> that was spectacular. And, and throughout your story, Mike, I was thinking about our caregivers, our family members. Sabrina, would you stand so we can say thank you to you? So Mike, thanks for, thanks, thanks for the moral courage to share your powerful, powerful story and personal journey. Um, and I'm pretty sure your daughter Sarah is really happy to have dad around coloring on Sundays. <laughs> So there's a, there's a number of airmen like Mike, you know, 50,000, we've heard the numbers over the past two decades of war, who require some sustained level of care for traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress, and related brain injuries. And so, th you know, thanks to the generosity of many Americans, we're at a place now where we can actually start providing that care. And today's event would not be possible without the leadership, the vision, and and the stick to itiveness of Mr. Arnold Fisher. I love the story that we had, it was confirmed again when we met, when he, when he said that, and he goes, hey, he goes, I'm a builder, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> so sir, for, for not only this audience here, but for the thousands that, the, of soldiers, sailors, and Marines whose lives and their families that you've touched, uh, let me thank you for being an inspiration for all of us and sort of for getting things done. So Dr. Piazza said it. This is about delivering hope to our service members. So in my office in the Pentagon, one of my most treasured items on display is a five cent Hershey's candy bar suspended under a parachute under a glass case. It's a candy bomb from the Berlin Airlift, delivered by then Lieutenant Colonel Gail Halverson, who became known as the Candy Bomber. Because he knew there were starving children in Berlin, so he rigged up these candy bars under parachutes, and he dropped them on the city as they came in for landing loaded with supplies and food for a city that was under siege. And a few years ago, a young a, a, a man walked up to Colonel Halverson and he shook his hand and he said, Sir, I want to thank you for saving my life. So Colonel Halverson asked him to share his story. He said, you know, like, like many orphans, I lost my entire family in the war. And I was living on the street and I was searching a garbage pile for scraps of food and something landed next to me. It was a candy bar tied to a parachute. That candy bar saved my life. He said, you see, Colonel, a person can live without food and water, but they can't live without hope. And I had lost hope until someone showed me they cared enough to drop a piece of candy from the sky. It gave me hope. You saved my life. So today's groundbreaking is a symbolic reminder about the important help that await patients like Mike. Members come seeking help and hope so they can break through the mental, the physical, the emotional, and spiritual barriers, creating a better tomorrow for themselves and for their families. Because our service members cannot be set aside as broken toys, removed from their teammates, their jobs, their support systems, because each individually, each individual has a uniquely personal story that requires a, new, a uniquely personal approach. And it's not only about the service member, it's about the family and the caregivers. Great kids like Sarah, who just want mom or dad back. And so the passion and the dedication of the health professionals here, led by Dr. Piazza, our warriors are able to continue to serve on active duty and enjoy a full life. So for me and from Don, 
thank you once again for all who made this day possible and for all those who will enter here to restore their hope as we renew our sacred duty and our sacred commitment to care for all of our warriors. Thank you very much.